there's a number of different ways to adjust inventory in Lizzie from adjusting it on an invoice to adjusting it when you're receiving orders. But in this video, we're going to focus on manually adjusting the inventory like you would do when you're uh, doing inventory checks or you found a discrepancy and you need to take care of it. Um, so right now I'm actually viewing a item and at the top of the control, you can actually see that there is an adjust inventory option here. Now I can do this from here or I can also go to management and adjust inventory. Now the difference is, is here Lizzie's already aware of the part that you want to adjust. So it fills in some information for you. If you go straight over to the adjust inventory control, then you're going to have to manually type in the part number. But this is where you'd really be if you were going to do an inventory check. Um, you wouldn't want to go look up each individual part number and then hit the adjust inventory and then go back and it would just take a lot of time. So I'll show you both ways as we go here. So the first thing I want to show you before we get started is down here at the bottom, we can see that we actually have the this item in stock in a couple different locations within the dealership. Now I want to adjust this first one, this A1 dash store one. Um, so that's going to be the one that we're going to work with. So we're going to come up here and click adjust inventory. Now, a couple notes, um, the information over here on the right, first of all, is to upload information or upload a file from a, an actual scanner to the system to fill in a bunch of items at once, where basically I walk around the store scanning the items and then I come and upload the, the information to Lizzie to actually do the adjustments. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on this. Um, if you wanted to do something like that, then you can get in touch with us and we'll give, get you the appropriate information. Now. On the adjust inventory, starting up here at the top, we can select the date that we would like to have this adjustment take place. Um, we can select specific accounts. By default, the system is using inventory shrinkage, but you can select other accounts if you want. Um, you can select the department that you want to actually have the hit go against. Um, you can tell it that this particular adjustment is being adjusted out and we want to apply use tax. So for example, I've got a barrel of oil and I'm taking oil out of it to use in the shop. I can actually adjust the quantity out and tell it to apply use tax to it when we do it so that it shows up on the sales tax report for accounting to make sure that they pay the appropriate taxes. Um, we can also tell it to print barcode labels if we want to do that. Now moving down, there's actually two separate methods for doing inventory adjustments. There's what we call ending value and adjusting value. And the, the basic idea behind it, and we highly recommend everybody stay on ending value, but if you do adjusting value, you're basically telling Lizzie to add one of these or take away two of these. Um, so you're having to do the math to tell it how much of something to do. Now in an ending value situation, what you're doing is you're actually telling it how many you actually have. You're giving it the ending value and you're letting Lizzie determine whether or not she needs to do any adjustment at all. And if so, which in which direction. So for example, if we have five in stock and I come in and tell Lizzie that we've got five and Lizzie already knows we got five, then nothing happens. If I tell it we've got four, then she says, well, I've got five listed in my inventory, so I need to adjust one of those out of inventory. Um, so it just makes it a lot easier to, to deal with things. Now, another option we have here is whether we want to move the miscellaneous. So let's say that we did not set up a quantity when we, when we first set this bin. We did not give it a, quant uh, I mean a bin location. And so Lizzie defaulted to the miscellaneous bin. Well, if I turn this option on, I'm telling Lizzie, look, whenever I put an item in here, I'm going to pick a bin. But if you happen to have inventory in a miscellaneous bin, I want you to move it automatically from that bin into the bin that I picked and do any inventory adjustment that you might need to do in the process. So it, it kind of speeds up the, the process of getting things into an actual bin if you didn't do that in the, in the beginning. Um, we can tell it whether we're scanning individual barcodes and also you can set a default working bin for the thing so that every time I go in, it automatically selects the bin that I'm actually working in when I'm doing inventory. Now, right now, I, you can see that the system has already filled in a part number for me. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in that we have eight of these and then we're going to hit the tab key 
twice and then I'm again I'm wanting to select the the one here so you'll notice by default it's giving me the bins that the parts already located in and then it gives me additional bins if I want to find something else but we're going to choose this particular bin that we want to adjust so if you remember there were seven we told it eight so we ought to be adjusting one item into inventory in this particular situation now if you're doing inventory and you're doing a, a say a bin location it is perfectly okay to continue to enter part numbers here and and put in the the different inventory quantities so for example i'm going to come over here and we're going to go ahead and select this guy so i can put as many things down here as i want before i actually process now i don't recommend putting too much because the longer you wait to process the more likely it is somebody's going to go grab a part while you're trying to do inventory but the point is is you can absolutely do you know an entire bin location before you actually hit the process button or you can process them one at a time really doesn't make any difference um so so that's really all there is to processing so if we go ahead and process our adjustments both of those items were adjusted and so if we come back over here to our item you can see now that there's actually eight of these and if we come up here and view our uh, item history you can see down here that in the A1, the lowercase A1 bin, that I adjusted one of these into inventory for $28. So it's the, the system is doing everything that it needs to do to adjust the inventory. And, and that adjustment screen is kind of where you go to, to check inventory and to make changes if things are wrong. You, you do not receive orders in there. You don't you know use that thing very often. It, it really, in a perfect environment, it should never get used. Um, you know, you'll do the initial inventory in it. And then from that point forward, you'll be adjusting inventory. The only times would be, you know, where you're adjusting inventory out for the used stuff. Um, but, you know, on a day-to-day -day process, you shouldn't be using that control very often.